So most likely, we had also defined what is sand. Sand is a fragmented uh, particle of rock, any type of rock. So uh, years after years, uh, due to the natural calamities and all the transformations, the rock particles are uh, becoming fragmented. And there are various uh, mixed masses. All the sizes are not same, and all the geometrical shapes are also not same. It is a mixed mass of different shapes and sizes. Uh, uh, starting from, say, very powdery mass, powdery substance, to some smaller fragments, some medium uh, fragments, and larger uh, fragments. Obviously, the in a molding material, molding sand, the proportion of very large uh, fractions are very minimum because we used to use screen or riddle to separate the uh, larger particles now what is what is what may be the type actually molding material that is uh, sand molding when it is sand molding so there are other materials also later on we discuss uh, but if it is sand molding, that is a very basic type of molding, green sand molding, what is known as green sand molding. So in the last class, we had mentioned about how the cope and drag patterns are used. There are other types of uh, molding uh, systems, but in our workshop video, we observed a cope and drag type of system uh, where the upper flask is known as the cope flask and the bottom flask or lower flask is known as the drag hub and in the workshop actually what was the drag part there was no separate flask but the uh, your floor of the shop floor that is um, uh, filled with some molding material sand the floor itself served the purpose of drag bottom part and on that the upper half, that is the cope flask, was placed. So you observed all the uh, videos. We had also discussed how the cope and drag halves are used, using pattern, how the mold cavity is uh, prepared, then molten metal is poured. Then after solidification, the resultant part is known as the cast part. And those uh, the total process is known as the casting. So cast and casting separate and here in in those discussions we had mentioned about molding materials using some mass uh, that material was uh, used to prepare the cavity just by ramming uh, against the pattern and ramming against the cope flasks etc and the, then the pattern was taken out so cavity was produced now this material is known as the molding material and in the, our discussion the material was mainly sand that's why this is called sand molding and why it is green sand because this is moist sand this, no, not the color is green moist sand is known as the green sand so when green sand is used as a material, this is known as green sand molding. But green sand is to be prepared. Now how it is prepared? So actually what are the constituents of molding sand or molding material? Now you just observe here silica sand grains. That is dry silica particles. Dry that is free from any moisture okay so molding ma mainly major sharity that is 80 to major share that is 80 to 90 percent or more 94 percent maybe also is the silica particle or silica or silica is a particular type if the sand particles are generated from some silica rock or there are other types of uh, say, um, um, silica in the form of granular quartz but we may have other jargon sand we may have jargon sand later on we shall discuss mention 
uh, jargon sand we may have chrome magnesite uh, then other types of shamot sand so many other types of uh, rocks uh, rock particles are there in nature in different parts of globe uh, so based on the geographical locations and um, all these are having uh, different qualities properties accordingly uh, the costs are also different right so but readily available sand is silica sand in uh, nature vast quality quantity of silica sands are available that's why almost all the time we are mentioning about silica but not necessarily silica is the only there are many more so dry silica sand 80 to 94 percent that is major share is taken and that is the silica sand grains and these uh, sand particles are in the form of grains of as i have mentioned different sizes and shapes you just uh, micrometer to millimeter or some powdery mass may also be there so that it indicates the sizes are many more uh, not a, a same type of size or same geometrical shapes are available but it's a mixed mass now only dry sand will not serve the purpose as we have observed in our workshop video also i think by this time all of you are familiar with the workshop video on forging a foundry green sand mass was used a dough you know what is dough wheat flour you know dry wheat flour but if uh, wheat flour is um, taken in dry condition can you prepare the bread bread no it must have to be mixed with water and adequate amount of water not a say you are taking a handful of uh, wheat flour and adding a glass of uh, say one liter of water in it so that will not serve the purpose that will become liquid so adequate at this term adequate is important which will make a dough right so when dry silica sand is taken it can't be used as a molding material you can't apply pressure it can't be adhered to any external surface or internal surface so what is the requirement is to add some other ingredients or constituents what are those moisture third point you uh, observe here moisture due to uh, binding due to uh, from uh, this bonding ability bonding action we should add adequate amount of moisture maybe from depending on the use maybe 1.5 to 8% again more than 8% may uh, spoil the mass okay and when moisture is added in a dry sand that is the concept of green sand that is wet state green sand right and not only moisture but some other ingredients like say binder in general we used to use this term that is dry sand dry sand then additives and binders additives are those ingredients some chemical constituents additives uh, those are used additives say if we want to increase some properties special properties then these uh, some uh, chemicals are to be added and then binder binder will bind all the ingredients together okay binders binders will bind all the ingredients together that is the added binder is uh, if i take natural sand naturally available sand which is available in nature then it is already mixed with some moisture uh, moisture that is water 
as well as binder. Binder is clay. Now clay is and clay again. What is clay again? Clay is again a more uh, refined uh, um, sand. When sand particles are again further refined. Okay, that is the age of clay is uh, far more than uh, sand. When it is transforming, when sands are again transforming, transforming after so many transformations, and not only transformation, when it is mixed with various impurities, like say um, your, um, I mean, waste leaf, waste cotton, the dead animals' bodies. All these, it is mixed with various other ingredients, and finally, that is clay. And that is naturally available clay, but we may have artificial clays also. Okay, bentonite, kaolinite, fire brick, fire clay. Right? So clay, clay is already mixed with uh, the naturally available sand. Okay. So if we use natural sand as a binding, uh, as a molding material, then we may not add any other in, uh, in constituents because clay is already there, moisture is already there. But for good quality uh, casting or um, automation, automated in industries, uh, we uh, don't use this naturally available sand, right? So in that case, we use synthetic sand or dry silica sand, which should be mixed with added amount of a measured amount of uh, water, moisture, plus some bi binders. Clay may be the bi one of the binders, but some good quality uh, inorganic organic binders are also there. Later on, we shall discuss. And additives. Additives will enhance some properties like when molten metal is poured at a very high temperature, so that molten metal directly attacks for the first time to the face, face portion. When the cavity is produced, right, the inner surfaces are known as face. So molten metal directly attacks the face portion for the first time. And if the sand in that face portion is not having sufficient strength as well as refractory property. Refractory means to withstand the very high heat. Otherwise, getting the very high heat instantaneously, the portions, face portions particularly, may burn out. And if the portions are burnt out, then what will happen? The surface quality will be damaged. The geometry, that is shape, will also be altered. So this is one thing to uh, it must have some uh, ability or capacity to absorb that heat that is a refractoriness for a property. Another property when the molten metal will be poured it will be poured from some elevated height. That is it will have some added pressure which is the concept of metallostatic pressure. So both temperature and metallostatic pressure. So by virtue of that pressure, again, the geometry or the face, say, some portions may be shifted. So dimension will be altered in that case. So again, the facing sand or that particular portion of the sand must have a have an ability, uh, quality, have a quality, which is known as the strength. So strength refractoriness, those are very important, particularly in the face portion. Because face are the first liner to absorb the uh, molten metal. So molten metal which contains heat as well as metallostatic pressure. 
so some desired uh, some qualities are desired so in naturally available sand those qualities may not be there but in industries when artificial sands are used then again we may add some additives chemicals other than sand which will impart or enhance some qualities sometime we may uh, require a very good uh, surface finish of the product glossy appearance so for that again we may have to add something so in this way to increase various uh, properties all the time the sand itself may not contain all the properties so we should add some third third agent which is the concept of additives so dry silica sand plus moisture plus binder these are the essential minimum these three and plus additives if required right so all these four ingredients or constituents make the molding material and when it is added with moisture that is the green sand right so what we have mentioned additives materials other than the base material base material is the sand for the improvement of some properties like say facing as i have mentioned face is very uh, susceptible portion uh, uh, is, uh, it must give a, a very smooth surface finish it must absorb high heat of the molten metal the metal static pressure all these and for that pulverized coal coal dust pulverized a powdery mass coal also known as sea coal coal dust or sea coal that is pulverized pulverized you know but this is a powdery form of uh, dust uh, coal uh, in now in, in in the recent time uh, in power plants also thermal power plants a uh, fuel is used um, uh, what type of fuel coal is the fuel but pulverized uh, fuel fired system dust powder and it is mixed with some other uh, oils um, fuel then uh, that is used in the burner to heat um, water in the boiler that um, when water is heated inside the boiler steam is formed that steam is again superheated and that superheated steam is utilized uh, to to be fed in a turbine where turbine blades are um, uh, getting the steam power uh, the turbine blades are rotated then it is connected with some other electrical things and finally the power is generated so but uh, basically in, in your thermal power station Uh, chemical energy is finally converted into electrical energy via mechanical transformation that is interesting chemical to electrical okay so fuel fuel is the main uh, i mean ingredient in that case coal is the fuel in thermal power station and pulverized fuels are used in today's uh, power generating station thermal power generating station so coal dust similarly this is pulverized uh, coal and uh, we also term it as sea coal okay so it gives a smoother and cleaner surface right and also increase hot and dry strength of the mold that is strength is increased and the hot Uh, hot means uh, to absorb this high heat refractoriness and particularly in the face area we may also use silica flower so it is also finely ground silica powdery form and some cushion materials uh, it is also uh, it will immediately burn when the molten metal is poured so cushion metal will burn instead of burning the uh, sand okay so what are the ingredient what are those materials maybe wood flower wood flower 
you, you easily it can burn getting the heat cereals various cereals are also used that will absorb the heat for the first time they will burn but protect the facing sand or the sand portion so wood flour cellulose cereals all these so these are also additive because all the sand particles may not have those qualities similarly we may have so many other additives like say iron oxide silica flour we already have mentioned iron oxide powdery fe2o3 powdery mass this also will increase hot strength coal dust silica flour we have already mentioned cereals short dust again okay then molasses ethyl ethylene glycol so all these uh, cereals we have mentioned so all these molasses cereals ethylene glycol iron oxide silica flour coal dust uh, then cereals short dust all these uh, wood flour it, it is not written here but we have mentioned here wood wood flour so all these are nothing but the additives those will increase some desired properties right now here molasses you just observe it interesting molasses this can also be used as an as an additive hey sorry binder it is having some binding ability but what is molasses is a by product produced during the preparation of sugar from the sugar cane in sugar industries a dark thick viscous liquid dark thick viscous liquid sweet in taste so that is molasses now molasses may be used as a binder but this is not a good binder because molasses are also very hygroscopic in nature hygroscopic in nature it will absorb uh, readily absorb moisture from the atmosphere and if it absorbs moisture what is the problem after some essay we are preparing a say cavity firm cavity solid cavity but after some time as soon as it will absorb moisture the mass will be released right it will it will become softer so the desired shape may not be retained okay so produced part will have some defects that's why for good quality casting molasses are not preferred to be used as a binder <coughs> sorry but when uh, it will also you just observe here molasses uh, resistance to drying out the, uh, that is the mold may dry out uh, with uh, the progress of time so if molasses is there then it will absorb some moisture so drying out uh, will be protect but that may not be required for all the uh, castings so molasses are not preferred for good quality casting it is not that costly also so these these are additives now when i have mentioned about natural sand which is obtained from nature very nature which is already mixed with binders as it binders and um, water additive may not be there but advantage is uh, we need not uh, mix any binder because it is already mixed with clay naturally available clay and also we need not mix any moisture so uh, they are cheap in nature readily we can uh, uh, use immediately we getting the material we can readily use this okay there is no time required to mix all the ingredients so mixing machines chambers those are not required no extra equipment for mixing or preparation of the sand so that is cheap in uh, that way but what is the do what are the disadvantage 
uh, their uh, some desired properties may not be there like they may not be refracted they may not have refractoriness property or it is all, all already mixed with various sort of impurities which may reduce the surface finish okay so where those uh, natural sand may be uh, used for very light casting some uh, fewer uh, casting for ordinary use not for engineering now what is the remedy we may use synthetic sand now synthetic sand is nothing but dry and clay free silica sand or any other type of sand dry clay free silica sand that is they are prepared in the industry processed in the industry okay and they must be must have to be because as they are they are dry so they the water must have to be mixed with it in measured quantity then some binding but because that is also clay clay free dry silica sand that is the synthetic sand clay free so the uh, binding material will have to be added additives uh, may have to be added so that's why they are what are the disadvantages they are costly because extra time extra equipment extra manpower all these are needed but what are the advantage their refractoriness may be very high because we are adding additives moldability uh, with less moisture that is we are controlling the moisture content so the dough is prepared in exact proportion no extra amount of moisture is there so that's why the prepared mold will be very perfect what is the concept of permeability so whether we had mentioned in the last class what about permeability say in a sand mass as we have mentioned the sizes are not all same and there are very larger particles as well as smaller fragments and of different shapes and size okay so say this is this is a very large uh, particle large grain it is uh, amalgamated mixed with some other shape not a pentagon not a hexagon some other odd shape and here another say pentagonal uh, particle of other size is there so in between these three there is a void open space in this way similarly this particle and this particle and this, there is another void space say there is, there are some dust dust like powdery mass so in between again there are open spaces so when they are in meshed condition different shapes and sizes will generate so many open or void spaces in between them so these are the porosity open space or the permeability more the openness more will be the permeable permeability and if say i use only very powdery only fine powdery mass powder say powder talcum powder so what about the openness almost this is a compact compact right so that is not that permeable porosity is less so if porosity is less right then the surface finish will be become very smooth on the contrary if the openness or porosity is less then the dissolved gases will be entrapped inside the mold cavity now why it is uh, why it is important because the when molten metal will be poured molten metal uh, contains so many dissolved gases because there are various alloying elements in the metal and metal itself also produce some uh, will result some gases so molten metal contains various dissolved gases and also atmospheric air will be entrapped during the transportation pouring 
so atmospheric air will also be entrapped and this is the second point and third one is when molten metal will be poured inside the cavity from at a very high temperature say 1400 degree centigrade for steel or 600 like degree centigrade temperature for aluminum or lighter materials then getting that heat the molding sand contains moisture water so readily those part some part will be evaporated and produce steam so all these gaseous substances will be dissolved with the molten metal and will be entrapped inside the molding cavity and if they can't leave the mold cavity then after solidification number of defects will be there there will be so many defects due to casting so we shall discuss later on but majority of the defects are due to these entrapped gases or bubbles gas borne defects are many more we can't remove completely we zero defect uh, casting is not possible but target is to reduce as far as practicable so if we increase the permeability porosity then majority of the gases may escape so permeability molding sand is having a quality permeability but if powdery masses are used that permeability will be minimized and surface finish will become smooth but the permeability will be uh, lost okay so what how what how to measure the sizes again later on we shall discuss and to increase the permeability artificially we use in our molding shop last class we had discussed we used to use a vent wire or vent rod and go on perforating different places so can you remember that part when we had mentioned about oh, no not uh, yes sir so we had mentioned about uh, in the la uh, last class we had mentioned or not yes sir so how to how to use what is the rule of venting can you remember so insert the stick uh, and try to fill the maximum height of the pattern what is the max top height of the pattern and then take out the uh, rod or wire and decrease the length to some extent and go on perforating throughout so that the uh, perforations never touches the uh, never touch the top surface or any surface of the pattern otherwise through those capillary holes molten metal will enter in those capillary capillary holes and after solidification that will remain over the casting that is the defect known as fin so we shall remove those fins so these are the synthetic sand so select we may select and we may also use some special type of sands for uh, some special requirements like say zircon what is zircon is a zircon zirconium silicate zr sio4 zirconium silicate so this sand has low thermal expansion thermal expansion means getting the high heat from the molten metal it will not expand if it expands so what will be the problem some defects will be generated so during the defect uh, discussions we shall again discuss okay so zircon sand and they are used for bronze casting alloy steels chrome steels magne manganese steels etc olivine sand which is nothing but ortho silicate of iron and manganese what is the formula mgfe o sio2 ortho silicate of manganese and iron 
and what are the uh, advantage it has high density conductivity of heat and refractiveness and where it is used for non ferrous and intricate cast intricate means the very complex critical complex critical shape having various uh, uh, nooks and corners curves parts complex curved sections that is the intricacy and also for non ferrous shamot sand cha mo double t is produced by <coughs> calcina calcining calcination right process of calcination adding cal cal calcium high grade fire clay right at about 1100 degrees centigrade so what is the zircon and olivine they are costly sand so this is comparatively cheaper heavy steel casting heavy steel casting requires the use of shamot chromite and chrome magnesite refractiveness property is good with this high density and chilling now chilling what is chilling again we shall discuss some defects that may result due to this problem now chilling means uh, sudden cooling sudden cooling sudden cooling means say if you are heating or quenching quenching or more than that is chilling chilling means say if an, an object is heated at 1200 degree centigrade and suddenly from that temperature it is dipped into a ice cold water so massive change of temperature drastic change of temperature sudden cooling is chilling and by due to this chilling so many defects may also generate crack formation very hard uh, spots may be developed so those are the defects but controlled uh, chilling or design chilling is needed to increase the solidification control solidification so what is the meaning say if this is the cavity a very oh, where uh, this is thick thickness is very many more and molten metal is poured that this is large casting say so molten metal is poured now how the solidification started as these uh, external surfaces they are directly connected with the atmosphere say atmospheric air is there or molding material sand is there okay so immediately these surface portions will lose heat heat will be dissipated to the atmospheric air which is open to the atmosphere or uh, here it is also there are molding sand so molding sand will absorb some heat so the surface will start solidifying immediately after pouring of the molten metal so these portions are solidified gradually the lower portions are solidified gradually the lower portions are solidified in this way the center material in the center will lose it at last and if the section thickness is too high a volume of the material is too high then sometime the center may not be solidified properly properly because already this is solidified it may not absorb further heat on the contrary if the section thickness of the uh, cast part is very thin then immediately they will uh, release heat to the atmosphere and all the portions will be solidified uh, equally okay so in such cases where solidification in the particularly in the mid portion or central portion is a problem then the chilling tendency may have to be increased 
Okay. So here, if say shamot or chromite or chrome magnesite type of sand is used, then these portion may readily absorb heat. So central port location will be solidified simultaneously with the surfaces. Some chills, there are a substance known as chills. So later on we shall discuss. Chills are also used. It is inserted in, in the critical uh, thickness uh, portions to enhance the chilling tendency. So chilling is having some advantages for controlled solidification, but at the same time, it is also having some disadvantage that may generate some defect. So that those will be mentioned later on. So in this way, we have different type of molding materials like green sand. So green sand, which is mixed with some dry silica sand, major portion, and 18 to 30% of clay, 6 to 8% of moisture. So that is green sand. Now, when a mold is prepared with green sand material, that is known as green sand molding. But when that same green sand mold is prepared, listen carefully, the green sand mold is prepared, then it is baked in an oven. So moisture portion is evaporated, leaving behind a dry sand mass. Not a dry powdery sand, but a dry mass, dry mold material, mold. So that is the concept of dry sand molding or dry sand mold. But you can't prepare a mold cavity using the dry powdery sand. That you should remember. So green sand mold, dry sand mold. When mold is prepared with green sand, then baked in an oven or furnace or in atmospheric air. Then the... Uh, dry sand mold is prepared. It will give you a greater strength, dry, dry strength. Again, properties will be di discussed later on. Loam sand, when the proportion of uh, clay is 50%, because clay is cheaper compared to molding material. So if I want to produce for large casting, particularly for very large casting, cylinders, paper rolls, very large casting. So for large casting, if I want to produce the total structure using good quality sand, then it will be very costly. It may not be feasible, economically viable. In that case, the structure is prepared with loam sand. Loam sand means which contains 50% of clay, which will give you cheap, yeah, cheap of cost. It, it will be economic. And as sandy um, clay is used, so when clay is dried, it will give very high strength also. Then facing sand, we have already discussed the face portion is susceptible. So in that portion, we are using facing sand. Now the rest of the flask, uh, we have observed the technique of uh, foundry. So flask is filled up with some molding material. And face is susceptible portion where the molten metal is be poured. So the backup or the total flask, larger flasks may be filled with a sand which is known as backing sand. Backup sand. Packed with some backup sand. And the face portion is prepared with fine sand or molding sand or fine uh, facing sand. Now this backup sand is actually time and again the used sand is known as backup sand. So we don't uh, we waste this, we don't throw it away, the used sand. After use, after use, after use, again we mix, remix, remix and use th that because those sand can't be used as a good quality sand. But to fill up the cavity, like say for large casting, we may mix it with 50% of clay also. That is to prepare loam sand or to back up, use it as a backup. 
and this is the used floor sand and time and again we are pouring molten metal uh, some portions are burnt out again we are mixing coal dust or sea coal to increase some property so color becomes black and black that's why backing sand is also known as black sand and when you just observe the last item system sand when this back, black sand or backup sand is used in a mechanized automated foundry where there is no human intervention the same sand is having a name system sand this concept is same use is same but name is only different system sand backup sand or backing sand or black sand is known as system sand in mechanized foundries parting sand means say to avoid sticking between two halves say cope and drag half okay some finely powdery sand dry silica sand free from clay and moisture or any dirt and dust is sprinkled so that is a parting sand and what is core sand now what is core now core in the um, pattern making shop you prepared a pattern what is the name name is the reversing gear handle of a lathe and that pattern was used in the first job of our foundry in the video you observe how that is placed and on that pattern there are some protruded portions some cylindrical parts smaller cylinder two more smaller cylindrical parts one larger cylinder and one curved part protruded portion those were prepared separately and using nails and wheel wheel brace or drill you insert those portions on the pattern why those are uh, prepared those portions later on again we shall discuss those por protruded portions are known as core prints mind that core prints core prints and core another term is their core core prints when this pattern is used the pattern was placed on the drag hub on the floor and was rammed so after uh, the withdrawal of the pattern some holes were generated you observe the video very carefully some holes were generated conforming those cylindrical or curved shapes along with the shape of the pattern now why these holes are required now after the preparation of these holes or cavity some cylindrical pieces are inserted on those holes cylindrical pieces may be produced by some sand again which is known as core sand or some other material may have to be used the function is if i insert some obstructions in on on those places then when molten metal will be poured molten metal will not fill those cavities portions so after solidification we shall get some hollow portions on those areas so i require the hollow so when where some hollow projection or hollow shape is required the flow of molten metal on those portions are to be restricted so that can that can be done by using pat a core so we are preparing a hollow portions then we are placing core separately from outside but on the pattern those are known as core print so core print will give you the impression or seat of the core so core and core prints are separate you should understand so core when cores are prepared with sand as i have mentioned sand may be used to prepare a core so that must be very hard so this is a special type of sand which is known as core sand so sands used for making cores are called core sands 
Now this is also a silica sand, but mixed with this is very important. This is also a silica sand. Silica sand is also used for molding material, molding sand, but it is mixed with core oil, which is composed of various oils like vegetable oil, linseed oil, vegetable oils. Okay, linseed oil, resins, light mineral oil, and various other binding materials, which will give very high strength and very high hardness because this. Core sand and molding sands must have some uh, differences, not same. This core sand must be very hard and must have very good collapsibility property also because after the pouring of molten metal, right, pouring of molten metal, those portions say this is a core placed in, inside, say this is a cavity and we don't want uh, molten metal to flow in this particular portion. Uh, we require a hollow, say, part, portion. So one core is inserted, core prepared with core making sand. So after when molten metal is poured, it will fill the entire cavity and it will be become solidified. So after solidification, task is to remove this core striking it from outside. So when I am striking, it must have to be collapsed. If you can collapse it, if you can break it, then you will not get this hollow portion. So collapsibility is another property, required property, of course. High strength, high hardness, high refractoriness, high collapsibility. And all the properties that later on we shall discuss the properties, desirable properties of molding sand. All the properties of molding sand must have to be there along with some special properties because cores will be surrounded from all sides by hot molten metal. It may be the center of the part. It, it will completely surrounded by hot stream of molten metal. Both metallostatic pressure will also be very high. So coarse sand is very important. So we have backing sand, parting sand, coarse sand, system sand, dry sand, loam sand, facing sand, all these. So do you have any question up to this? No, sir. So now, after some time, after two, three minutes break, we shall start discussing the properties of molding sand so after three minutes recess okay 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 sir okay sir where is here vishal roy yes sir, i'm here yeah uh, but uh, for the timing for the uh, timing i am calling don't leave i am calling your uh, roles then and only then you leave 20 role uh, i think uh, oh there is one more page, right? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, you just stop. Uh, oh, you are getting so it's good. So, uh, yeah. what happens? We can ask you again over it. I am to wait a banana to ask me again. You can add it to one. The most Sir, uh, Excel Excel take a copy code to me. Okay, then. Uh, so later on, I shall uh, correct it. But okay, who is roll fifty? Rishab Dhariwal, nay. For the timing, I am just managing. 52, later on, I shall rectify. 52, 53, 54, 56, Ovik Chaudhuri, 59, 60. So 
ईशान मंडल लिखे दिए शांतनु मंडल Present sir. Seven. Eight. Present sir. Nine. Roll nine. Eleven thirty six. Eleven thirty six. Eight. Thirteen. Present sir. Fourteen three zero two. You letter and it be fourteen. Present sir. Fifteen. Yes sir. Fourteen sir. Fourteen. Sir fifteen present. Ten twelve ten. Present sir. Eleven. Twelve. Fourteen. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Present, sir. Nineteen. Present, sir. Twenty. Present, sir. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Present, sir. Twenty-four. Present, sir. Twenty-seven, twenty-nine. Yes, sir. Thirty, thirty-one. Yes, sir. Thirty-two, thirty-three, 
16 lateral 16 present sir 17 present sir 18 say 173 present sir 18 sir. 18 173 in Ronil yes yes sir to me yes sir are 18 roll found chatterji sir 170 sir 170 present sir 16 oh. present sir sorry sir one one six one two one six okay sir sir one three present sir one 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 seven zero one zero one nine one one last one thirty what are you one zero two chole hai jab sir then niche then niche last three sir then niche sir ki naam chhomadi mandal one one seven zero Sir, one one seven zero. Present, one one seven zero. Sir, present. Okay. One thirty eight. Sir, one one nine one. Sir, one one six two. I mean, present. Jokun, jokun, bol. Dati, tokun kano response kochen. One one three eight. Ita. Ha sir, ha sir. Ar kya Sir, one one six two. Present chilam. Ki naam? Sir, Shelly de Rahul Sharkar. Sir, Tokun Kiko present percentage Rakti. Sir, I can Sir, I can see. 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 Sir, I they are not there during the last time then again they will become they will be treated as absent okay so now take uh, two minutes break then we shall come again okay sir okay sir thank you okay, okay sir so to, and right now for this this is uh, 11 9 so we shall join after two three minutes okay sir.
सो हेलो सर यस सर आपने बोला बोले शायद वन टू वन सिक्स परसेंट एक टू देख बन सर सर आप देखों देख वो जो कुन हो बे तो कुन हो या कुन ना नो सम प्रॉपर्टीज डिजायरेबल प्रॉपर्टीज सो वी हैव मेंशन्ड अबाउट सम यूज़ ऑफ एडिटिव्स इत्यादि टू एनहांस सम प्रॉपर्टी नाउ व्हाट आर द प्रॉपर्टीज एक्चुअली द प्रॉपर्टीज आर वेरी इंपोर्ट as i have mentioned just have just what i told you molten metal always contains some dissolved gases okay and when all these dissolved gases are entrapped inside the cavity then after solidification so many defects may be generated now what are those defects again the, we, during the discussion of defects we shall discuss in detail and uh, so some holes or passages must be there in between the sand particles for the easy escape or removal of the dissolved gases so that is the concept of uh, permeability or porosity that is the ability of the sand to allow the gas to pass okay it is the ability that is permeability and this permeability depends on the shape and size as i have mentioned if it is a very powdery mass then obviously the structure will be very compact and permeability will less and also depends on the moisture content and also on the ramming so if you ram with very high pressure then the structure will be very compact on the other hand if you apply very less pressure then the structure will be very open so what will be the right amount of application of pressure that you will have to understand you would have to learn so it depends on uh, experience skill all this but in case of machine ramming automation automated factories automated foundries you may adjust the uh, desired pressure now next is permeability or porosity openness so next is plasticity or flowability flowability or plasticity means when i am adding moisture and applying pressure the dough or molding material will flow in different corners if say there are various sharp corners complicated curvatures then all these cavities must be uh, fulfilled by the molding material so if the molding material is not having the property known as flowability that is if it can't enter in all these uh, very sharp corners and fine edges then those portions will remain void so the by virtue of the property flowability that is the ability of the molding material that is molding sand to flow in various corners and also not only flowing like say we know elasticity and plasticity if say ela some ela what is elastic elastic material if you stretch or apply pressure external pressure that will take the shape but as soon as the external pressure will be released again the part will come back to its original shape that is elastic on the contrary what is plastic if you apply pressure it will take a desired shape and if the pressure is withdrawn the shape will be retained so that is a plastic so here we are talking about plasticity both flowability as well as plasticity that is after applying pressure it will flow in various corners but as soon as the ramming pressure will be withdrawn then again the shape will be retained so that is the plasticity so both flowability as well as plasticity are the desirable properties okay now what is next adhesiveness now what is adhesiveness adhesive we know what is adhesive now molding sand particles must stick 
to the external surface of the molding box. You, you, you observe what is a molding flask, cofab. There was a cast iron, cofab, cast iron, material was cast iron. So molding material sh should stick to the cofabs because when the cofabs are lifted, you, you are familiar with the workshop videos. That is time and again, we are lifting the cofab, placing the cofab in upside down manner again replacing the cofab in a in the original position so two three times we are handling so if the molding material that is sand is not sticking with the cope flask which is cast iron or any material any foreign material then what will happen the total mass will come down will fall so no purpose will be served so this is the ability to stick to the foreign material external material not with the sand particle itself, some outside material. So this is the property adhesive. And another property just reverse is cohesive. Cohesive means the ability of the material to stick together, that is amongst the same material, sand particle to sand particle. Why it is needed? Because when we are applying pressure, a mass is produced like say cope box, again we are pulling this, we are placing this in an upside down manner, again replacing. But the total mass now, sand particle, individual sand particle, they are united using binding material and this uh, cohesiveness property, all these, to increase the cohesiveness property, adhesiveness property, we are adding some binding material also. But only molding sand is also having some property, sticking ability amongst themselves. So to stick together. So that is cohesive, cohesive adhesive. That is basically the binding ability. Binding ability amongst the individual particle is cohesive with foreign particle external surface, other surface is adhesive. Now, green strength, what is green strength when molding material, dry silica sand is in moist state, that is known as green sand. You should remember, when dry silica sand is mixed with moisture or water, that is a green sand. And the strength of that sand is the concept of green strength, that is strength at green condition or moist condition. Now, when the green mass is baked in an oven or in a furnace or in open atmosphere that is moisture part will be evaporated leaving behind a dry mass not dry sand particles powdered sand but dry mass that is the dry mold dry sand mold and the strength of that dry sand mold is the concept of dry strength and hot, hot strength, when at least 100 degrees centigrade, it, if the strength of the mold cavity at least at 100 degrees centigrade, when molten metal will be poured from some very elevated temperature, it must withstand that heat. Now getting that heat, the mold cavity may enlarge or may break or may be cracked. But if a property known as hot strength is there, then those chances will be minimized. So it must withstand at least 100 degrees centigrade. That is the concept of hot strength. Refractiveness is the capacity to withstand much more pressure, much more temperature, not 100 degree say 1000 degree, 1200 degree centigrade, when uh, if it is not having that property, then the portions will be burnt out. Now, what is the function of fire brick? You know, in furnace, bricks are used as the inner line. Furnace, again, we shall discuss. It, it is having a steel structure, steel outside cell. But inside, there are fire brick lining. 
fire brick, mind that, fire brick, not ordinary brick. Ordinary brick will not be able to absorb that tremendous amount of heat. It will be cracked, burnt out and all these. But refractory bricks, fire bricks, Okay, so that is having a refractoriness, that is capability of sand to withstand very high temperature, not 100 degree. 100 degree is the hot stand. Okay, so fusion will be avoided. Another property is collapsibility. As I have mentioned, after solidification of the molten metal, task is to break the molding sand and to clean the cast. So if the sand can't be collapsed, then obviously we can't take out the part. So collapsibility is another property. Just by uh, knocking out, uh, the sand particles must have to be removed. Coefficient of expansion means getting the heat, the sand may be expanded and some pro problems, some defects will be generated. Again, during the defects discussion, we shall discuss what are the defects that can be generated. So it must have some low coefficient of expansion. It means it will not expand. Getting the heat of the molten metal, it will not expand to a high level. If it expands, then dimension or shapes will be increased. Then fineness is the, uh, again, the concept of, uh, it is coming from the concept of permeability or porosity. If the sand particles are very fine, then what will happen? Uh, the surface finish will become very smooth. On the contrary, uh, porosity may be reduced. Uh, that is, permeability may be impaired. So a balance is needed here. It is just, just contradictory. Fineness and permeability, these two terms are contradictory. If the, 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 the structure is very fine, then obviously permeability will be impaired. On the contrary, if permeability is very high, then fineness will be impaired. So a balance is needed. It depends on the experience, requirement, the type of product use all this. Bench life is simple. Molding sand should retain its properties, all the properties during its uh, total use. That is when we are procuring the sand, we are storing it in the inventory, we are handling using all these. And uh, while we are not using, sometime the material remains idle. So all these are the bench life. We can't use, say, even, say we procured some sand uh, 10 years back. So that can't be used because by this time, so many properties may be uh, deteriorated. So there is obviously a life, bench life. And reactivity, it must not be very reactive with various other substance, like particularly with molten material. Uh, if the sand particle reacts, chemically in um, say chemically active with the molten metal say aluminum we are pouring aluminum or we are pouring bronze we are pouring uh, castor and mild steel and that particular sand is having a chemical tendency to react with that uh, material so chemical reaction will take place and obviously you may understand so many defects errors will occur so chemical inertness is uh, desired. And this, as I in the last class also, we had mentioned when we are placing a pattern inside the co hub and drag hub or what else, we are also using uh, some pins, sprue pins, what is known as sprue pins. One is used in this position, another in that position. Um, these are known as sprue pins, a tapered plug, either wood, wooden or uh, cast iron, tapered portion. But depending on their position, one pin is known as riser, another is runner. 
Now, which is riser and which is runner? That is important. Now, the riser and runner. Now, where the molten metal will be poured? Say, if this is, this figure is not that good. Say, if this is my cavity. Say, this is the cavity to be produced or part to be produced. So I am pouring molten metal from some elevated height. Okay. So here, here, say this is the parting line. Now from here, I am pouring the molten metal. Molten metal is flowing down. Then it is entering from this point. So this is the in gate actually through which the molten metal finally enters inside the cavity in gate. And this vertical portion is known as down gate. And this portion is known as pouring basin. So later on we shall discuss in detail again. So all these are known as runner. Runner, here it is written. No, it is not written here. Okay. So this is runner. This is runner. But actually, this, this vertical portion is called down gate. But altogether, there is a pouring basin, down gate. Uh, runner actual portion is this portion and finally in gate. So altogether, in short, when we are drawing something and we are leveling on the drawing and level, we just mention runner for this part. But actually, this is not the runner portion. Runner is this horizontal one. So later on, we shall discuss. But this is runner through which molten metal enters into the cavity. And riser means, say, this is the riser or maybe placed anywhere. Again, there are so many risers based on which there are so many names. Again, we shall discuss later on. But riser is nothing but the reservoir which stores extra amount of metal because metal, all the metals are having a property that is shrinkage. When metal solidifies from liquid to solid state, it will shrink in volume. And if I am pouring, say, just sufficient amount of metal to fill the cavity, then during solidification and after solidification, the size and shapes will be reduced. That is due to contraction, solidification, solidification shrinkage. And if it is reduced, shrink then the shape or geometry will be altered. As a result, we may have to reject the part. So to cater the, this uh, shortage of metal during solidification, if I have one reservoir, which will store extra amount of metal, so as soon as metal will shrink, some more metal will enter and will try to retain its shape. So that is the reservoir of multi extra material. So that is the function of reservoir, riser. So riser and runner, two parts are different. But to produce these two parts, a same plug, conical shape mainly. Why conical? Again, there is reason. We may also use a cylindrical. Why, why not cylindrical? Why conical? Again, we'll be discussed. Basically, this is a tapered part, conical. Okay, so both riser and runner requires a, 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 a an accessory that is known as a screw pin. So in foundry, we require at least two screw pins. One is used for as a riser, one is used as a runner. So if I ask you, I am giving you two pins and asking you, tell me which one is riser and which one is runner. So you should answer 
both are neither riser nor runner both are sprue pins but based on the use where it, one pin will be used as a riser or runner accordingly we shall name it is very important point and now as i have mentioned you just uh, these are the uh, extra passage venting using vent rod or vent wire the perforations are made just to um, provide extra passage openness and if say as i have mentioned you try to fill the top portion of the so from the cop hub you insert a, a sprue pin and touch the top land of the pattern and then take out say this is the height up to this top land and grip here using your finger and take out the pin and reduce this length say if this is the length if this is my length this is the total length of sprue pin and this is the length up to which the top surface has been touched and now in reduce the length up to here and grip here then go on perforating all out, all, all through why because if if these projections are touched like here all here then all through all these capillary tubes capillary passages when molten metal will be poured here molten metal is poured from here it is filling the entire cavity then the molten metal will also enter inside this capillary tubes and after solidification this uh, protruded portions will be retained these are known as fins is a defect okay that's why this is important the rule of venting or the method of venting rule doesn't mean the steel rule this is rule means the uh, method rule of venting what is the rule of venting if i ask you rule of venting then you should tell this fill that maximum um, height of the pattern then reduce the length to some extent maybe by at least one third amount okay theoretically this is written reduce the length by one third or at least somehow so that when you are perforating it is not never touching the any top surface of the pattern so this is venting and green sand mold uh, we have already mentioned how to dry silica sand is a major share 85 to 92% then some binder uh, bentonite clay is so one synthetic binder 6 to 8 12% or many more or some other uh, to add 18 to uh, 20 uh, sorry 20% maybe then water some 3 to 5% and additives to increase some properties all these are mixed and the green sand mixture is produced then the pattern is placed on a flat surface or drag box then uh, you just ram okay then cop hub is placed on the top of the drag box and then riser pin and runner pins are uh, that is sprue pins are uh, inserted and again it is rammed then you remove the sprue pins then lift the uh, lift the cope box placed upside down manner okay and pattern is withdrawn how you using one uh, lifter and mallet if it is wooden pattern you use lifter and mallet if it is a metallic pattern then obviously you can insert a, a lifter by striking so what is the remedy there are some uh, spike pins spike pins so that is already attached so that is possible to be lifted then the cleaning is to be required uh, clean the um, old cavity and then again fit place the cope hub and drag hub where there is a cavity so we have observed the uh, sequential stages with a figure and then metal is poured 
so these are some advantages limitations of green sand molding so in any book each and every book contains all these detailed informations go through any books and also read what are the comma because that i i shall not mention because you are going through the workshop class simultaneously so you read if you can't understand then we shall discuss you take note what are the common hand tools i am writing in the chat box okay sir you read this uh, also So from any book, you will get this. What are the common hand tools, and how they are used? So you should also practice the figures, how they are used. Discuss with figures. In this um, uh, subject, I have mentioned uh, the. figures are very very important all the times you must uh, uh, draw figures level diagrams may not be uh, very pictorial but uh, all these must be explanatory sketches okay and using sketch pen as i have mentioned so uh, so common hand tools and they are used with figures so that is your Uh, now today we have uh, mentioned about what are the discussions uh, today the different types of molding material green sand dry sand facing sand etc and uh, additives uh, binders uh, what are the additives what are the different binders and what are the sands system sand uh, sorry synthetic sand natural sand and some special type of sands okay so number one with different type of sands that is uh, natural synthetic and special type of sands then from the type of use point of uh, use point of view uh, green sand dry sand facing sand backing sand loam sand uh, that is from uh, the use point of view where we are using how we are using so that is the types and then third one is the additives and binders uh what are the additives what are the binders what is sand itself what is clay okay and then fourth point is the different properties desirable properties of molding sand and we have already learned the process of green sand molding preparation and today also the agreements have been mentioned the procedural steps the displays uh, sand prepare sand place the uh i mean pattern then pack it mm, placing it in the drag hub pack it with green sand then again insert the cope etc etc so the procedural steps and the advantages and limitations of green sand preparation mold preparation so in the next class ha huh? to bollam normal pencil jodi tum keu some some of you had asked the in during scanning uh, of those figures the pencil mark uh, may become very light so in that case you may if this system uh, uh, is going to be continued uh, then that is in this mode then you may use sketch pen otherwise if physical um, uh, i mean physical uh, system uh, revives then you use this uh, pencil ियर 
or all the students uh, if you are here then you may consider this uh, slot because that will maybe suitable for me so if so all of you are getting i think yes so right now we may fix that is uh, most likely that is uh, um, next uh, second is not it yes sir so cr first first tuesday tuesday koto koto tarikh अच्छा नाउ सी आर 